If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. Hey, everybody. Hi, guys. It's Mind Pump time. Look, in this episode, we have a blast. We answer awesome fitness questions. And in the first part of this episode, it's introductory fun time, conversation stuff. We talk about uh, current events. And we talk about what's going on in our lives. That was the first 43 minutes. Here's what we talked about in that first part of this episode. Adam talked about his barbecue extravaganza. Bonanza. <laughs> he cooked up amazing butcher box meat in his new slow cooker barbecue. Of course, butcher box is one of our sponsors. If you go to butcherbox.com forward slash mind pump, you'll get baby back ribs, two pounds of ground beef, and two New York strips for free. In your first box. Oh, by the way. Oh, sweet mother. You also get $20 off and free shipping. Now, because Adam likes protein and he's always trying to build bigger muscles, Mm. he also made high protein rice. Now, what you do with this is you take bone broth and instead of water, you use the bone broth to make your rice. Now, our favorite brand of bone broth, because it's the tastiest and because it's uh, healthy and organic, is Kettle and Fire. Now, remember, bone broth is chalk full of collagen protein, which is good for your gut, good for your skin, good for your connective tissue. Um, And again, we are sponsored by them. So if you go to kettleandfire.com forward slash mind pump, you'll get 20% off all their products and free shipping if you're getting six products or more. Then I ask Adam about his Satan house. (laughs) Apparently, one of his neighbors- (laughs) He's been summoning the spirits. Thought some crazy shit was going on because his house was glowing red, uh, but it wasn't the devil. It was actually his juve red light. Now, red light therapy, great for your skin. Adam uses it for psoriasis. Also, balances out hormones, and man, it's been shows to raise testosterone. Also, tends to speed up the metabolism a little bit because it amplifies the mitochondria of your cells. Uh, We love Juve. Juve is the best maker of red lights. If you go to juve.com forward slash mind pump, you'll get a MAPS Prime program for free with the purchase of $500 or more and free shipping. Then I talk about my morning kerfuffle with Jessica uh, and at, and Justin talked about I think how, we're both going to be in trouble after this. Yeah, he talks about he had the same kind of argument with uh, his wife, basically how we're super forgetful and how they have to tell us to do the same thing 50 million times in a row. And yeah. so we, we wish- We can't be alone on that, Sal. No, we wish we had a Brain FM for them where they were talking through Brain FM so that we could focus and concentrate and absorb everything- Wife mode. And not forget. Now, Brain FM makes songs and beats that help you with focus, help you with sleep, or meditation, relaxation. If you go to brain.fm forward slash mind pump, you'll get 20% off any of their products. Then I talk about my son, how he's going to be speaking at his school's graduation. I'm so proud. Adam brought brought up how Coke is coming out with a new formula, new Coke. That's a comeback from 1985. It failed back then. Let's see what happens now. Uh, We talk about how there's airport USB pirates going on. Yar. You fuckers. Uh, and then we talked about how cars collecting data is going to be a $750 billion industry by 2030. Also, uh, then we get into the fitness part, sorry, of this episode. The first question, uh, what's the best way to gain muscle while staying lean? So we talk about the best strategies to do that. The next question, what's the best way to warm up for weight training when you don't have much time? The next question, What are some specific exercises that help with your squat? And the final question, can overtraining or working out too much cause gut issues like bloating, stomach pain, and acid reflux? Great part in that that part of this episode. Also, this month, MAPS HIT, remember HIT stands for High Intensity Interval Training. This is our best short-term fat-burning program that we have with barbell and dumbbell complexes. Hit it. It's 50% off. It'll help you get ready for summer. Just go to MAPSHIT, M-A-P-S-H-I-I-T dot com and use the code HIT50, H-I-I-T-5-0, no space, for the discount. Make sure you go do it right now. You know my favorite part of uh, yeah. of, of all of it is? What? That we're like, we're working right now. And you know what we're doing? Chilling. Have great conversation. We're, we're talking. <laughs> great conversation. We're with hanging buddies. out like we're friends. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Wait a minute. 
What do you mean like? I mean, we're <laughs> like, pretending, uh, pretending like we oh like. Oh my! It's like an artificial like situation of like what friends would do. Oh my gosh! Yeah. I knew it. I thought you were my real friend. <laughs> I am in real life. It took a while, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you know Justin's a real friend. Uh, He's a hard one to win over. Yeah, yeah, man. I'm not that easy. You know, give it up the first night kind of friend. <laughs> You he's know, a, he's Come a on. bit of a prude. Yeah, I'm a prude kind of. I'm old school. <laughs> it's worth it. It was worth it. Yeah, I'm grilling last night, and someone someone sends me a DM and says, "Show me your meat." I'm like, <laughs> I said, "You better buy dinner like, for me whoa, first. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> Slow your roll there." Somebody literally DM'd you that. Yeah, yeah some guy. Oh, yeah. that show me your meat. The barbecue looked silly. Uh, the food that you like, made looked insane. Oh, my for, mouth was watering. So last night, uh, uh, Taylor and Rachel came over. Uh, Ev came over. Uh, and Katrina and I, and we, we lit up the, the Traeger grill and, uh, um, boy, <laughs> to assemble it was really easy. Like Taylor and I knocked that out in less than an hour the other day and to kind of figure it out, like how, I mean, it's super high tech, dude. Like this thing. Oh yeah. You got apps and all yeah, kinds of stuff. Going yeah. On it's, it. it's really high. But once you figure it out, it's actually really easy and Whoa. So I got the, the butcher box, the new the rib thing that they had, right? So I actually got Was it the barbecue bundle or whatever? Yeah, yeah I actually got all four of your guys' orders, right? So Son of a bitch. all the orders got sent to my house. <laughs> and I defrosted it over the weekend and the plan was we were gonna we were gonna grill up because it was uh Traeger Barbecue has a like a national weekend thing. It was this last weekend. And so I had I I got all your guys' uh, stuff from Butcher Box sent to my house. I defrosted it with plans to grill it on Traeger Day. And it fucking stormed all weekend, and so right. it, it, oh, it'd been in the it'd been in the refrigerator defrosted for like two or three days. And I'm like, oh, I don't want it to sit much longer. We got to cook it. Yeah, you have to do it. So last night we cooked uh, the ribs and uh, the uh, New York strips, and dude, and you did them. This is like a three hour process. You said, yeah. yeah, it was about three and a half hours that we smoked them for. Um, it, the recipe called for two and a half, but I had a little bit of trouble twice. One time my, the flame went out. I didn't know it went out. And so I had to, which just, it's slow, which when you're cooking, slow cooking something, it wasn't a big deal at all. It just extended it a little longer. Probably actually it was better. It dropped the temperature down to like 175, 200 for a little bit, a little bit longer than I would like. So that ex- I extended it out longer. And so it just makes the meat like it just oh, dissolves. Fell, the, fell yeah. off. And the, the, I got all the, I got everything from, so I got everything from Traeger and Butcher Box. I mean, all the meat came from Butcher Box, all the, the rub and the, the stuff came from uh, Traeger. And I used the, their recipe. How's their uh, barbecue sauce? Awesome. Yeah. 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 Uh, you know what they do? They actually, they pair your, so, th- so I looked up what meat I'm cooking, right? So I, I, I used the, the um, butcher box ribs and then the steaks. Look up on Traeger what kind of meat that I'm cooking. It recommends what pellets for me to use, recommends what rub oh, to pair with that, Dang. and what barbecue sauce. So did you follow their instructions? Totally, to yeah. a T. And it was amazing. So what kind, of, what kind of pellets did you use? Just foolproof. So it's like an apple. It was an apple, hickory, something. Uh, apple, apple, hickory, cedar Well, pellets, I'm glad I'm glad that they... You, was it Katrina that just dropped off like five ribs for us to have? So thanks for... I appreciate that you're giving us five ribs. I yeah. Know. To yeah. have to taste. <laughs> yeah. Fucker. Hey, did you eat whatever, I'll take what I can get. Did you eat a shit ton of meat last night? Bro, I ate... I literally ate two full racks uh, <laughs> last night. You fatty. Did you, see, did you see my plate on the IG story? That, that was all you? Yes. Yeah. That was... I crushed... All all of those. Now, how was your stomach afterwards? Uh, not bad, actually. You didn't, you didn't like poop a, a literal brick. Here's Just the, like a, here's the thing, a man. The, I, here, here's the thing that I always try and tell <laughs> people about, like grass fed meat. Like if you, if you eat a uh, butcher box and then you try and compare it to some grain fed cow, the the taste isn't as as uh, as rich, right? Because it's not as marb. The meat's not, it's not as, as much fat. It's not as much fat. It's no. not as marbly because they fatten the cows up. But I tell you what, man, Butcher Box is real fucking close to being as good tasting without being as fatty as a lot it's of these. It's easier to digest. Well, and that's for me. the point that I'm getting to right now is, and I could eat a whole ton of it and it doesn't upset my stomach. I mean, I crushed it. Wow. Yeah, it was really. Wow. Did you guys have any starches or did you guys use anything? So I also, last night, uh, and uh, Rachel put it on the story, the girls actually made this, so I can't take the credit for it, but I had it last night, was your protein rice. Protein rice. It's brilliant, but everybody is 
tagging me right now. It's yeah. Sweeping the nation. Yeah. yeah no. That sounded like I, was, <laughs> I should say that. Huh? I did sell you. <laughs> You're out of your mind. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> no, you know why? You got me excited because I've gotten like it is that good though. No, no, literally, honest. I've gotten at least thirty people tagging no, me no, on no. protein. So rice. I used, I used. Uh, well, we did two, right? So we used the uh, kettle on fire chicken broth, and then we did the kettle on fire beef uh, broth. So what'd you think? Amazing. Right. Yeah, and then we did Brussels sprouts, and then uh, and D- Doug's Brussels sprouts and bacon recipe, and then sprinkled a little bit of that over the over the protein rice. Mm. Hello. So here's the that thing. That was blah. Well, here's the thing with all that, right? So when you slow cook meat, the reason why it gets so, what's the word I want to use? The Tender. Re- yeah, the reason why it falls off is because the slow cooking process breaks down all the harder tissues, all the 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 collagen, the the sinew. The, the, the parts that you tend to throw away. Now, and now, it breaks it down because of the slow cooking process, so, so it kind of partially digests it. Here's the good thing about it. Then you eat that. Now, why is that a good thing to eat? Which you On top of it, you made the protein rice, which is with bone broth, which is collagen protein. That Those types of proteins have health benefits. Now, it's not that they're miracle proteins, but you know by any stretch of the imagination. But if you think about the average person's diet, we don't get them in our diet anymore because yeah. we tend to seek out meat that doesn't have it. We cut those parts off of the meat. Um, and those proteins are very, very high in certain amino acids, glycine, proline, hydroxyproline. For example, collagen protein is like 50% of those amino acids. And those amino acids are what your body uses to make your tendons, your ligaments, your uh, to repair your gut. This is why it's always in, in, in people's gut health uh, protocols. But let's say you're a heavy lifter I, I would suspect that consuming, uh, you know, uh, enough collagen should help you with the your joints. Should yeah, help you with connective tissue. Yeah, yeah, it definitely should. So, so, do you think using the kettle on fire in my rice actually helped my stomach because of how much I ate? Are you saying that right now? I don't know. I don't know if I'd go that far because I don't. I don't know if collagen protein necessarily is like this instant help my gut thing. But over time. The amino acids that are high in collagen protein are the same amino acids that the gut uses to repair itself. Mm. So I don't think it's like a, like oh a, no, my, yeah, my stomach's off, drink some collagen. Right, not like a probiotic would work. No, I think it's more of a long term kind of good for skin, hair, nails, you know, that kind of stuff. Well, like, I, like there's a lot of women's um, cosmetic products and supplements for skin for women that are collagen protein for that very reason. What I loved was it, it boosted my. You know, my and I've shared on the show before, like, you know, hitting my protein intake on a daily basis, especially if I'm only eating a few meals a day, is, is can be tough. And so to take something like rice that's minimal to no protein. It's all in, starch. Yeah. And actually boost it with twenty more grams of protein. Yeah, dude. You're, you're, and then I'm having it with my steak and pork. I mean, I had a massive protein. Well, meal. so here's a quick meal that I do, right? I'll make the the protein rice. So I'll have forty or fifty grams of carbs from the rice. 20 grams of collagen protein and then what I'll do to make it even to make it even more balanced is I'll put like a tablespoon of butter in it and melt that in there. Oh, so now God. I've got the fats, the proteins and the carbs. Mm. So it's like a perfect uh, meal. Nummy. Super good. Nummy. Hey, uh I, I want you to tell the audience about your Satan house. Why your neighbor <laughs> why your why your neighbor thought you had the devil <laughs> coming out of your house. Yeah. So <laughs> that red glow. I've got a uh I've got a one. I've I mean a, a lot of friendly neighbors, but I have one that I I, I talk to and I see uh, on a regular basis. He's always walking his dog around the same time that I'm walking my dog, and uh, real nice. Always comes up, says what's up to me, and I was actually grilling outside, and he come over and peeked his head over the fence. He's like, "Hey, what are you doing? Oh, I'm just grilling, and we're we're chopping it up." He's like, "Man," he's like. What was going on in your house last night? <laughs> and you should have uh, lied. Well, I didn't know what he was. We talking. were using the Ouija board. <laughs> right, right. I had no idea what he was talking about. And he's like, "Man, uh, really weird, man." Like, I was came by here about six o'clock, uh, six seven p.m. It was a little bit later. It was like seven thirty p.m. when the sun goes down, right? So it was just starting to get dark. Yeah, we were just slaughtering goats. And he's like, "And your whole house was glowing." And I'm like, "What?" <laughs> and I, and he's like, "Yeah, no, it, I took a picture." And so he gets his phone out. And he scrolls through and he shows me a picture of the house. And so now I live in a, uh, my house is actually three story, four stories if you count the garage. So I have a two car garage under the first story. Then you go up to one level, two levels, three levels. So it's, you know, it's it's a good tall house, a condo, right? And it's, so I have windows on every level. And he shows me this picture and literally all three of the, the top three levels, 
every window from every side of the house is glowing red, like super bright. And I was like, holy. Now, of course, I knew right away when he showed me the picture. I was like, oh, shit. But I had no idea that the juve light was putting off that much light. That And so what was happening? So we have it in our spare room. That's the way we have it set up and we use it. And obviously just Katrina and I are there. So I walk around my house naked all the time and all the doors are open. So it doesn't matter. So when I, when I must have been doing it this last time, I had the doors open and I'm naked out of a shower, my afternoon shower, probably after I got done rowing or something. And the, the red light ref, reflects off of all the white walls like so well that the bottom floor is like emitting like bright red light out the window. So the whole house was glowing red, dude. That's some and powerful I, shit. And I, he showed me the picture and I thought, man, I can't imagine. Imagine what, imagine seeing that in I someone's know. house and not knowing well, what that was. Yeah, most people don't know what a juve red light is, you know? Yeah. So I'm sitting here trying to explain to him the, the science behind it, why I'm using it, what it's all well, about. Well, it's a different red than a, a like a red light. Like if you just shined a red light on something, it's mm. not the same. This is like a, it's like a glowing. Oh, it's, it's if you've never seen it. Oh, it, it looks, and so the sky was, I mean, it, it was getting dusk, right? And and so the sky was kind of dark and we've had this kind of cloudy. Looked ominous. Yeah, no, very. I mean, it looks straight out of a scary movie. I got to, I, next time I see him, I'll have him send it to me so I have it so I can show you guys and I'll try and put a post it when I remember. Yeah. But it did look like. Super creepy. Now, are looking. you using it a lot again for the psoriasis? So mainly? I'm. I've been because of the my last test that I did and seeing where my testosterone levels. I've told you that it, it's kind of re-energized me to try and you know get more consistent with all these things. So yeah, you. I don't know if you noticed this morning too. I was. I'm drinking my green juice and I'm actually getting up and having a. I've been skipping breakfast for a long time. I'm trying to get back into having mm. a good balanced breakfast before I start my day. I'm back to consistently using the juve light. Have like, you been training consistently too with weights? Yeah, been, I told you yesterday. You look like you put on a few pounds of muscle. You look fuller. I have been lifting consistently. So what what happened? What I unfortunately what it has happened though is face. I've I've stepped back on swimming, and be, just because what's ha what's going on right now is I'm I'm, I'm only exercising like three times a week, mm. and. Uh, the benefits that I get from strength training, not just aesthetically, but of course, aesthetically too. Like, I mean, I like the way my physique looks as a lifter more than I do as a swimmer. And so what's been happening right now is because I'm only exercising three days a week, I'm caught in this like predicament, like, uh, I really want to go swim because I'm enjoying that right now. Mm. But I also, uh, the benefits of weight training are so important to me that it's like, that's becoming a priority. So in the last two weeks, I've only been able to swim like one time, which is, you know, way off of what I was doing just a month ago. So you're lifting a little more, swimming a little less. So yeah. So what you notice probably is I'm swimming less and yeah. I'm, I'm lifting. Well, both you guys, you and Justin both look like you're putting on a little bit of size, like, like good size, lean size. Yeah. Justin, yes, Project had, Beefcake. Are, are you lifting more consistently too, or what's going I on? I have been, yeah. That's been a real focus as of late. And um, uh, I've actually decided now, because baseball, the season's finally ended. And so, well, almost. Like, I have one more game to go to. But my time's freed up again to now really focus after work. I'm, like, really going to start hitting up uh, the 49er fit gym and, and, and go hit that up and, and start lifting with more intensity. I was still like maintaining. It was like totally just like maintenance mode, but I need to, I need to get after it, dude. I feel it right now. And so I've been like consistently trying to stack it up so I could like, you know, raise that intensity. That's the fun part of working yeah. out is when you, when the time works, your health is good, you got good sleep and then yeah, you I feel can, good right now. Yeah. Cause I never stop, right? I never stop working out, but that doesn't mean I'm always able to like push it and, and chase new strength goals and build muscle. That's doesn't work that way but it's impossible yeah but that's my favorite part when everything's dialed in and i can feel like oh, i feel good that's when my workouts are just fucking pure enjoyment you know what i'm saying oh yeah so you got in a little uh fight uh, this morning oh, was it this dude. morning or was <laughs> yeah, it <laughs> what it was just bad bro what happened well you know so it's an it wasn't a, it wasn't a fight it was just i, I, I feel a discussion yeah i feel bad for my girl because <laughs> a heavy discussion because yeah. i can be very frustrating um and it can be very frustrating who you kid. yeah believe it or not no yeah, that's it's true impossible. and the, we were and it's funny I, I, you know justin asked me about it because he saw me you know talking around the car and so i, I kind of told him a little bit and we both started commiserating or whatever yeah and i'm like you know I, i'm like I, jessica gets upset because she will tell me to do something or tell the kids to do something and it doesn't get done. So she has to tell us 
you know, 10, 15 times. Yeah. And then finally things start to get done or whatever, but it could be very frustrating. And I, and I was, and I feel, I understand like, I'll be, Oh yeah, that would be fine. I was telling her like, yeah, of course I, I would be frustrated too. But I was also trying to tell her like, listen, this is like not normal. Yeah. This is not a problem with just you. I promise this yeah. is, first of all, I'm like it's this with everybody. Universal. Second of all, I guarantee you, this is a, a common issue with families. So I was talking to Justin about it and Justin starts cracking up because yeah. <laughs> It's I've like had, the same thing. I've had the same discussion. Like well, what is it? Times. What the fuck are you guys not doing? It well, could be anything. Oh. N- no, well, yeah. Give me it, an example here. Oh, well, like, it's mainly with, so for, for my kids, like they just constantly will will pretend to listen, you know, to Courtney and, and then they will just like completely not do what she just told, like <laughs> consistently. And it, it, like that is the one button for her that's just like- Like go put your go toys away in your room or some shit. It doesn't even matter what it is. Like she'll, and here's the, th- here's the problem that we were kind of laughing about it was uh, it turns into every little minutia, all the little details. Like I need it this way. I need you to put your toothbrush back in this tray. You know, do it this way. You know, <laughs> like I'm like, whoa, 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 calm down. You know, like it, you got to get smarter with like your battles. Like pick, pick the big ones. <laughs> Did you say it like that? No. (laughs) No. I have before and I've failed because of that. You know, I have to like, I have to realize. Bro, that's like trying to put a fire out with gas. (laughs) Hurry, put the fire out. Throw some gas on it. Well, it was just like the whole thing. Okay. doesn't work. You're you're talking about like like having a hard time getting into washing dishes. And like, I've I've made this like massive effort to, uh, you know, just do that uh, regardless of, of, the berating that happens as I do it. Right. And so she, I told her, I'm like, you'd be the worst manager ever. I would never work for you ever. You're just digging yourself. Yeah, I don't give a fuck. Cause look, I'm trying to help you. Like I'm trying to help you. What are you doing? You're, you're going to tell me I'm putting it in the wrong way. Who cares? It's getting done. Why are you, ber- why are you berating? Like, and so there was a, a period of time. There was like a few months where I was just like, I, I, I did like, I'm not, not going to do it. I'm, I'm going to be like, I'm going to do it like sporadically, but, uh, I, I, that wasn't working. Obviously I was, <laughs> I was getting in more trouble. You know, that was like a bad move on my part. No, it's, it's funny because this is a common, it's a common thing between, you know, men and women, I think are just, are, can be different in this. And no, you guys are, it's funny that you're bringing this up because now you remind me what the, the argument that Katrina and I just got into yesterday, right? It was, well, like- it was over how the bed was made. Uh, so I make the bed right. in the morning. Like they care about all these little right. things. Right. So I make the bed in the morning, and they so, have to though so, because otherwise so, we do, nobody so, cares. So yeah. last True. the last time that our our house cleaners came, they actually made the bed different, and I actually liked how she made the bed. It just made the comforter. So the funny part is I'm the one who's the more the anal one about things being a certain way, mm-hmm. like being nicer or whatever. So that's what's funny about you guys telling the story is. So I made the bed different. Where uh, the just the way the comforters uh, you know laid on the bed, so it just sounds whatever. But what I know is that when it's like that, the pillows, everything's on top of it, which means in order to get under the covers, you have to kind of like get off the bed and then roll the, the right, covers back. Right. And a lot of times we go to bed before we're going to bed and we're kind of sitting on top of the covers. And I know with her being pregnant right now, it's like an ordeal to like <laughs> roll out of bed and then get out, get, to get up to pull the covers back. And I can just kind of like roll my body over real quick. And she's just not comfortable like that. So she's fussing about it. Like, why are you making the bed like this now? Yeah. <laughs> right. So yeah. she's giving me shit about it. And I'm like, because I like the way it looks. And she's like, I don't like it. And I'm like, well, then get up. Then you make the bed in the morning time, right? <laughs> and so she goes, well, then get, and she goes, well, then get up earlier so then you so I can make the bed because she gets up at fucking five. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Oh, she gets man. up before me. She's gonna make the bed while you're in it. Right, 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 right. <laughs> right. Stacking pillows on top. She's of like, you. yeah, yeah. Get it. Yeah. And it was like, I told her, I was like, well, get a job where you don't have to get up to work at five o'clock in the morning. Oh, and she's oh, like, man. why don't you get a job where you you don't have to get up at or you you have to be at work before eight o'clock? You yeah. Know? yeah. <laughs> No, dude, it's, it's a common. It's, no, for I mean, for us, it could be like you put the the towel on the towel rack in the wrong direction, or the the shower curtain isn't closed. Right, and they're all small things. These are all little things. Everybody like everybody knows they're small things. But when you stack them all up, I'm sure it's frustrating as hell. Yeah. But the thing I was trying to explain to her, I was like, listen. I promise you, this is not personal. I promise you, this happens yes. with everybody that I know. Talk to anybody who knows me. I'm frustrating like this. But also, this is a common issue that that, that people have, and it's just, fuck, I don't know what to I, I try to, to convey you. that to Courtney, too, because she does take it personally, and I'm just like, no, you can't yeah. take it per- Like, this is not, 
like what we need, and this is totally not a commercial for this at all, but I was just like, you know how effective like the focus is for Brain FM? Like I need that. Like when she's talking sometimes. Wife Brain <laughs> FM? Wife, wife <laughs> FM. You know what I mean? It just, <laughs> like I just hyper focus on all these nuanced things no, I'm supposed to remember. They're cracking up because as Justin and I are talking about this, Justice, Justin's like, I, I, he's like, I'm working on it though. Sally goes, I'm trying so hard when she's talking. I'm hyper focusing on what she's saying so I don't forget. <laughs> so I'm just trying to remember everything she tries to say so I don't forget. Yeah. And I'm like, bro, and I it doesn't work. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it sucks. It yeah, there's something, uh, there's something cracking, different about I'm it. I'm cracking up because it's the reverse at my house for sure. This is me like telling Katrina like all the little details of like how I like the house. And for me, so maybe I can give some perspective for the girls that are in your guys' lives. So like why, why I'm that way is like when the house is neat, when the house is a certain way, it definitely lowers anxiety and stress for me, and I'm way more productive. I'm way happier. If thing, if the, if things like this, like if the, we we have blankets that fold over the couch. I like them folded a certain way and over the couch. <laughs> so if it's not folded, if it's not folded, it's like kind of balled up on thing. Drive me crazy. Oh, right? yeah. Like that'll drive me crazy. If like so, when she gets home from work, she's always got tons of like paperwork. She has her laptop this time, and then she just throws it on the counter. Well, that would be and I'm fine. Like, I'm like. Make up, make up your mind where you want. And I said, and I've and I've told her, you have go buy a thing. Like I'll buy you a nice fucking drawer thing, like stand for your laptop and all your work shit. That when you come in from the work, that it goes in there, and that I don't have to, that I don't have a, a jacket, a purse, and stuff all over the counter that I just cleaned that like the house. So I'm I'm that way for for her. Yeah, well, that would be fine if like you were like that, like anal and, and you know detailed about all that stuff. If there wasn't fucking clutter everywhere that I'm like constantly picking up. And, like, <laughs> okay, yeah, that would it. drive me. You know what I'm saying? And you're gonna be that specific about like the way you load the dishes. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> that doesn't fucking make sense. <laughs> no, and it's not. It's funny too. It's like it's not that I don't. It's not, not that I don't care. It just doesn't sink in. It just doesn't process. And then when I do do one thing and I do it consistently. But then there's something else I fuck up on. I'm almost like, hey, didn't you notice that other thing that I did, though? Did I, ever- I know. <laughs> you know what I'm Always trying to write yeah. down. I'm like trying to write down what I did. Yeah, yeah, did yeah. I ever tell you guys the crazy girlfriend story that I had that no. I, was, I was dating this traveling nurse one time? And she was like super insecure and jealous. And I'll never forget. Like, I mean, and it, and it, there was there was things like leading up in the relationship that I should have seen the writing on the wall that, OK, it's not we're not meant to be or whatever like that because of how jealous and insecure she was. And one of like the, the the final straw that broke the camel's back was she was uh, she she was a nurse so she had an opposite schedule with me a lot of times so she would be home all day long and I'd be at work sometimes and I came home one time and I'll never forget she's in my kitchen and she's standing like as you walked in this was my old condo you know that I used to have as soon as you walk in the door you're facing the kitchen and she's standing there like you know the the pissed off woman look, the cocked hip, mm-hmm. you know, the hip. One the hip. foot is turned out yes, a little bit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. One foot turned out, hip cocked, neck to the side, right? Yeah, yeah. Head's kind of bobbling a right, little bit. Right, right. Mm-hmm. So, oh, I, you're fucked. Yeah, yeah, I know I'm in, I know I'm in for it as yeah. soon as I open yeah. the door yeah. from work, yeah. you know? Like, and she, on the counter is a booty sock, uh, a condom wrapper, and a hair tie. And there's, it's on, it's on my, it's on my counter. And all she's, laid out. All oh, laid out, right? Yeah. And she comes in. That's evidence. Right, and right away she's like, who the fucks? Exhibit are they, who, A. Who whose are these? Yeah. And I'm like, I'm looking at her like I, I I have no idea. Like, and she's just starts like freaking out on me. And why I'm, why she's freaking out? I'm kind of like looking at my house to your point, Justin. And there's dishes all in my sink, and the living room's a fucking disaster and stuff. Yeah. And I'm I'm like, I don't understand. Where is this coming from? I found this under your bed. And I'm like, what were you doing under my bed? And she's like, I was cleaning. And I'm like, wait a second. You decided to skip the dishes, yeah. skip the living room, <laughs> skip making Priorities. skip making my bed, and you started with cleaning underneath my bed as the first place to go. Mind mm. you, I'm a 26-year-old bachelor yeah. who's had this house for six years. Yeah. I don't know where the last time I cleaned underneath my right. bed was. And I read all your yearbook comments. <laughs> yeah. mm. oh, <laughs> <no>. <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> and I was like, are you kidding? And, and I, the truth was that I really, I mean, I was. It was your typical. You've been bat. there forever. I've been there forever. Oh, I mean, I, absolutely. I've had several girlfriends since you, and I'm sure it's one of their booty socks, one of their hair ties, and I'm an old ass condom wrapper. Oh, no. Yeah, it stacks <laughs> yeah, up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. no. Uh, but I thought it was so ironic because I'm like, why we're having the fight? I'm looking at a stack of dishes in the yeah. in, in the sink in a <laughs> messed up living room. And I'm like, like, come on. Like, who yeah, that's where you started. Right, like, 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 who come on. like, who decides I'm going to clean a house? I'm like, you know what? I'm going to start in the master bedroom under the bed. That's the first place I'm going to clean. Yeah. <laughs> damn. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Cre- mm. So, so difficult. Well, I think, you know, look, men and women, we're, we, we can, we tend to be very different. But if you believe, and this is, this is the, the, this is the conclusion that I come to is that if you believe that a man and woman are supposed to come together to become one or whatever you want to call it in esoteric terms, then it makes sense that we would have to challenge each other in very frustrating ways mm. because it would ca- I would ha- it, it forces one of two things to happen either you run away from each other or you grow so that you come closer together like you yeah. ever meet a really old couple who've been together a very long time and you see them bicker and argue, but oh, you, yeah. but it's so different. It's great. It's like joking and like whatever. I don't yeah. care. When you, I, when I you, over it. When you're with a couple who, and I like to think that Katrina and I are like this. Like when even even the comment about the 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 bed, right? Like it turns into action. We started laughing at the end because we're talking shit about like you know you should quit your job and like you know uh, they, yeah. if over the bed, yeah, right? Yeah, it's, we do. It's, it's totally. It turned into something like that was annoying to a comical. To that's both a of good us. thing. Yeah. When it when it gets to the point where you know you guys anno- you get annoyed with each other, but then you laugh at it because it's really not. Because yeah. there's a lot of things that can annoy peop- each people about each other that aren't really <clears throat> big deals, right? I'm not saying this is not a big deal necessarily. But uh, there's a lot of things. There's a lot of things we can do. And, I, and I, you're right, Adam. It's like you see these old couples and it's like, yeah, he does this. And yeah, she yeah. does that. And they tease each other and they're over it. Yeah. Like, I think that's the, that's like the, that's the secret formula, if you ask yeah, me. Yeah, and it's like it's, the grass is always greener, right? But yeah, think about if you lived with your best friend, like even if it's your buddy for like over 10 years, I'm going to fucking hate you, yeah. you know, like after a while, like you're going to annoy me on every level. It's There's true. no redeeming value. It's true. You know? So I was like, dude, we made it this long. This no, is great. it's funny, you know, because we had this conversation. I had this conversation with Jessica this morning and I'm just, I'm just like, I'm telling her, I'm like, listen, I know, I understand why you're frustrated. I would be frustrated too. We're having this thing. And I'm like, you know, and we're talking about it. And then later on, she, I think she felt bad. And so she sends me a text about, all the good things that I do. So she's like, well, let yeah. me tell you all the good things that you do so you don't feel bad. I'm yeah. Like, well, yeah, that's nice. There it is. So did I you, appreciate that. Did you oh, see that? smart, dude. Did you see the, uh, of course you saw it. You posted it. I don't know if I said anything back to you. Yes, it was yesterday, I think, your Instagram stories. You posted, I mean, you post so many goddamn memes, hard to keep up sometimes. But one of the memes you posted was, and I forgot what exactly what it said, but it was the uh, the iron skillet on the, on the stove uh, soaking in water. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's, yeah. The, that's the yeah. universal <laughs> sign for... Yeah. Yeah, so I, I'm like gonna watch. Everybody's this. done that. So to the point yeah. we're all talking about right now, that's yeah. like a pet peeve of mine. It's like that. That's could we always like yeah. at that moment when I yeah, came in my I story. I watch it now. With it the, was it was yeah. there was one on my thing. I took up a screenshot of it. I sent <laughs> them. Sent I, sent, I sent the mean to Katrina. No, and then I you see, didn't. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, don't get me in the fucking mix up, bro. Yeah. <laughs> look, it looks. Ow. Don't yeah. get me mixed up with that yeah. shit. Yeah. Yeah. That gives you hell? trouble, dude. It's like every there's always a soaking pan on my fucking oh, on, the, on the on the on the freaking what you call it. Don't get me thrown yeah. in there. Yeah, but I died when I saw that. Anyway, hey, did I did I tell you guys? Oh, I did. I texted you guys that my son's going to be speaking at his uh, graduation. Bro, what an honor. Dude, Isn't that's that great? so cool. So they have there's a kid that's going to do um the commencement speech, so that's not him, but he got selected to do like a memory lane speech. Oh. So I get and, and he didn't want to tell me what the details were because I guess he wants to keep it a surprise. But I guess he's going to go up there and do and talk about cuz they, he goes to a school that's got a small graduating class. You guys saw the picture of it. It's like maybe 50 total kids that are graduating from this eighth yeah. grade school or whatever. Mm-hmm. And he's going to do this this whole memory lane thing. Like, remember in third <laughs> grade when, you know, I'm imagining that's what it's going to be like. When John did this and when this happened or whatever. So they all grew up together through this process. Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah, it's really, cool. really cool. And and so I was I was giving him pointers on how to, how to talk. And I guess the teacher selected a few different kids to do this and then had them audition for who would be the one mm. to, to do it. And he Has he, he ever made a speech in front of no. like a crowd of uh, kids? No, and my daughter is usually the one that's more, will put herself out there. Uh-huh. Um, but, 
You know, my boys, he's he's kind of that reluctant. He's reluctantly uh, the kid that that tends to be put in those positions. Mm-hmm. Like when he's put in those positions, he tends to, he'll rise. He'll rise right. to the occasion, but he's not seeking it out, which is kind of cool. I kind of like no, that. No, that's cool. Yeah. I'm sure he's like nervous, but like you know he's going to kill it. Yeah. Right? Well, I don't know. I mean, I told him I said, you know, I gave him some pointers. I said, you yeah. know, however however slow you think you're talking, you're probably still talking too fast. Yeah. I said Look at one person in the audience when you're talking. That makes a big difference. Um, pause when you when you say a punchline or whatever. Give people an opportunity to soak in and, and joke and, and laugh or whatever. But I don't know. It's gonna be kind of. I mean, it's eighth grade. It's not a big deal. Like, what day? What day is he talking? When, when is it? Uh, it's on. Uh, it's at the end of the month. End of the month. End of the month. Yeah, yeah. I would love so, to see that. Yeah. So, um, but it, I mean, it's eighth grade. It's not like you know, college graduation or even high school. Yeah. But still, to see your no, kid. That's a big deal, dude. Well, yeah, I went to cool. his. I went to this dinner that they had the parents go to, and um, uh, it, it was like an eighth grade dinner dance, and the kids afterwards hung out and danced and all that stuff, and before the parents left. They did a slideshow of the kids and, you know, like going through the, the grades and growing up. And I saw pictures of my son when he was real little with his buddies. And, you know, they put a baby picture of him next to him. You know, they did this for all the kids. And it's not, it is impossible to not get emotional. Impossible. As I'm watching this and I'm surrounded by all these other parents and dads. And I don't know a whole lot of the, the parents. I'm not super involved in the school like his mom is. So I don't know a lot of them. So as I'm watching this, I'm feeling like, oh shit, am I gonna, am I gonna start tearing up? Like fuck, you, you get a little self conscious, <laughs> yeah, you know? Yeah. Fight it. Yeah. So I'm like, mm, you know, swallow it, and, mm. and then I look, I look to my left or my right, and there's dads next to me, and they're both like, mm. you know, so I'm like, I don't feel so <laughs> bad. Ah, you lost it. Yeah, yeah, I don't feel so bad, but yeah, yeah I'm so proud. You guys see, uh, new Coke is making a comeback. Shut. <sighs> Wait a minute. The Wait. 1985. The one that failed. Yes. New Coke coming back. What uh, was different about it? Yeah. So the, it was just a different. They they had this idea that they thought would be a brilliant idea back in nineteen. So like, hey guys, I know we're selling billions of cans of Coke, <laughs> yeah. but don't well, you think we should change the formula? Yeah, let's throw a monkey wrench. Well, in I there. think it was like during it was during the pep. We we've, we've talked on the show about this, the Pepsi and Coke wars that were yes. going on in the eighties. And I think you know Pepsi had taken a lead, and this was like a Coke strategy of let's let's release a new. Uh, formula, you know, and ingredients to new Coke. They release it, and it it just was it totally fell on its face. I think it was it didn't even last, but I think three or six months, and then they were done with it. But here, they're what they're doing is they're launching it in Stranger Things. Yeah. Oh, so, that's brilliant. Yeah. yeah. So season three. Oh, I can't wait to watch that. So and it, and it won't be in replace of your classic Coke. It's which I think so. This is the part that I think is brilliant about it is that they're not going to lose sales because of it. Those that love it's an additional option, right? Yes, yeah. it's nostalgia. Yes, because I remember distinctly as a kid, new Coke coming out, and then I distinctly remember classic yeah. Coke yeah, coming classic, out. Yeah, classic yeah. became the whole thing, the branding going forward. Because yeah, because it was, it was originally up. Coke. It was Coca Cola. Then, then they did New Coke, and then they had to call Classic Coke, which we're we're all familiar with today. They called it Classic Coke. Yeah, so yeah. people knew Coca Cola Classic. Yes, that's what yeah. it would say. What uh, just, I don't even remember what it tasted like. Was it like a real distinctive well, difference? Well, so I'm reading right now. I'm reading about it right now. I just pulled it up online, and it says in 1985, Coca Cola had been losing market share to diet soft drinks and yeah. non cola beverages for many years. Now you have to keep in mind that sodas really really took off. In the 80s. That's when sodas just became insane and it became regular to drink soda. It was like every commercial. Yeah, with every meal or whatever. And so it was a lot of competition. Is, is, is this where the term pop culture came from? It could have been. From <laughs> pop soda? Yeah. Oh, wow. My head just exploded. Yeah, dude. If that's the case, you just blew my mind yeah. right now. Yeah, seriously. Wow. Are you, uh, yeah. You're sober, huh? Sober. Pop music. Wow. 100%. That's a sober I mean, you got, idea. Yeah, you got Michael Jackson. You got like all uh, Britney Spears. Like that was pop. All from soda pop. Yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. If, that, whoa. if that's true, Adam. I wish we were high right now. That's <laughs> We'd be tripping so hard off that. So it says here, right here, here that, that what they found in 1985 is that consumers who were purchasing regular colas seemed to prefer the sweeter taste of rival Pepsi, and Coke, as Coca-Cola learned in conducting blind taste tests. So they, they were doing all these taste tests, and they're like, oh, it's because... Pepsi is sweeter and more people like Pepsi because it's got more sugar or whatever. So then they reinvented the formula to make it more so sweet. So Pepsi was actually winning that challenge according to their blind taste test. Yeah. See, here's the thing that here's the thing that they learned. Here's the thing that I think Coke learned that is, is a brilliant Actually, this is a very 
interesting thing for people to uh, to pay attention to is that people you can do blind taste tests and they can like the taste of something better, but that doesn't mean that they'll pick it hmm. because there's a lot more that goes into the choice that you make. Like people like Coke because it's nostalgia, it's look, it's been around for a long time, what it right. means for Americans. That brand is just burned in our brain. For example, if you give if you give Americans this and this is politics now, if you give Americans <laughs> a list of uh like uh issues, individual issues, where they stand on taxes, where they stand on regulation, where they stand on schooling, where they stand on healthcare, most Americans are relatively libertarian, liberal on social things. And conservative with uh, economic things, their money, yeah. But when it comes to voting, they'll vote for the candidate, so they won't even vote for the issues. Yeah, it's so it's kind of similar. It's, like, it's not just about the taste. People don't just buy Coke about for the taste because their sodas, I'm sure, that taste better. Well, wasn't than Coke. wasn't their true like brilliance uh, during the war? Like they shipped off a lot of product to, to soldiers, and so they it built this like. Uh, world brand. Yeah, this world brand where it was overseas and then like that was one thing the the soldiers really looked forward to and so when they came back to the states it was like we're Coke, you know, Coke is our soda. Yeah, you know? I don't know if it's still true but for a long time Coca-Cola was the most recognized brand in the world. No, it still is. Is it still it's the most still, recognized? Uh, like if you look at the top 5 uh, you know, worldwide most recognizable brands, mm. Coca-Cola is one of them. Wow! Yeah, it's up there. Whoa. More than more than Google or more than anything. Else? Oh yeah! I, in fact, I don't even know if. Well, maybe Google's up there now, but Coke, Coca Cola still has a much stronger brand. I think. I mean, that's a good question. Google yeah. may be up there now. Yeah, Check I'm it out. Though. Google. Oh, I got it. What is it? Uh, of uh, course, if you Google, I'm sure Google will uh, put themselves in the top. Google. Well, <laughs> yeah. I've never Googled Google. <laughs> yeah. Whoa. No. They, okay. So I what just happens. I just found an article in USA. Oh, there you go. There they are, right there. Yeah. Google, IBM, Walmart, Visa, eBay, FedEx, and 3M. 3M. I don't even and then Coca Cola. Interesting. Yeah, it's a uh, it's uh, it, uh, it, of course if you Google Google puts themselves as one of the most recognized. Yeah, we're, we're number one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's a little according funny. to our search research. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's like when the it's like when the when the, the FBI uh, uh, investigates itself. Yeah. Uh, according to our investigation, nobody did anything wrong. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thorough, thorough investigation. Yeah. No shit. Yeah, yeah. Actually, do you guys remember that movie, The Gods Must Be Crazy? Oh, oh shit! Man. And the gods Remind must be crazy me. too. Yeah. Oh wow. So it's like it this like African, funny, right? It's like yeah. this African tribe, yeah. and they're like hunter gatherers. Yeah. And they're and then somebody there's a plane flying over them, like a like a biplane or whatever, and someone throws, they drink a coke, yeah. and they throw the bottle out the window, and it hits one of the people in the head or whatever, and then they think it's a gift from the gods, and they all oh. fight over this bottle of yes. this empty bottle of coke. Oh my god! I'm gonna have to watch that. We I watched that in that school. Movie. That, that was, movie was. We so watched that fun. like in. That was a great movie. Yeah, like middle school or even elementary yeah. school. All I remember is how they spoke. Remember, they, there's the first time I ever heard the clicking in in, oh, the, right. in languages. You never yeah. heard that, you know that yeah. thing, whatever. Right. I remember hearing that as a kid. I was like, "What are they doing?" Mm -hmm. Teachers like, "That's how they talk." I'm like, oh, so shit. good. That's weird. Anyway, dude, uh, did you guys read the article about uh, the airport USB um, charging yes. stations? No, so, no. Yeah, so apparently it's a horrible idea to go ahead and charge your phone in airports because- they, Oh, really? Yeah, there's people that could put malware in there and basically like- Siphon off your information. Yeah, like lots of cyber attacks and crime happens uh, from- No shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so there's like, into those. there's like USB pirates and they'll go in these airports and they'll put like a- Little technology or something in the in the, in wow. the USB. Wow! And how many people sit there waiting for a plane and shop online and do yeah. shit like that? Yeah, wow. I, I doubt a lot of people even consider that. Now they sell uh, <laughs> devices that you can plug into your phone and then plug into them that'll only allow the charge to go through and no other data. Yeah, but you know what it reminds me of? Do you know how many people's credit cards get ripped off at uh, gas stations? Mm -hmm. Because people will go in and they'll 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 it's crack that thing debit up debit cards right? debit card and yeah. they'll do something to the to the little thing that you put your credit card in. Yeah. So have you noticed now at gas stations how there's that t that that like tape mm -hmm. that's covering the, the 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 part that opens and if it, it says if it's broken if tape is broken do not put your credit card in mm. because what they were doing is they were propping it open putting technology or whatever in there closing it you don't know the difference you slide your credit card in there you still get your gas your card but meanwhile they get yeah. all your information wow yeah so these fuckers you are know brilliant. Spe speaking of yeah. data and information like that i was actually just reading an article on uh what's happening with cars 
So they're predicting that by 2030, it'll be a $750 billion industry is the data that your cars will be able to provide to insurance companies, to the places you go most frequently to eat, to your grocery stores, like your habits, like everything. And so that information is going to become really, really valuable to all these different companies that would potentially buy that. Our cars tell us so much about our ha- our daily habits. You're, you're, you're get a, you get a bill from your insurance. Like, why did my insurance go up? You call them up. They're like, well, your phone, your your car showed us data that you actually look down at your phone several times <laughs> oh, while no. you're driving. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, that sounds funny. But why not? Right. Well, insurance companies had already had that little like device that you could plug in to uh, basically assess, uh, you know, your driving habits already, and like they would give you a discount based off of like you being a safe driver or not. So they are already starting to roll it out. That doesn't surprise me at all that that would be big business. That's the funny part. Like even with all these big search engines and everything, this was the the part of business people didn't even realize that data was going to be like the next gold that everybody wanted. Oh, it's 100% now. Well, that's what that's exactly mm-hmm. it's exactly what's happening. Like imagine like what you'll be able to do. So think about being somewhere uh where you're you the GPS, the car will be able to feed and tell tell a company like, "Oh, he's, you know, 3 blocks from Chick-fil-A." And then all of a sudden you get an ad that pops yeah. up for Chick-fil-A. A little coupon code, of course. Yeah, right, a coupon code real quick for 50% off. Of you. And guess what? It knows every time I go yeah. to Chick-fil-A the things I actually order there. So Dude, it targets- Dude, rewatch Minority Report. I'm telling you, they nailed it. Yeah. Wow, it's going to pick up. like His uh, his eyes are dilating slightly, uh, perspiration just a bit. He might be slightly aroused. Stripper club, uh, three <laughs> blocks down to the right. <laughs> you know, hey, you, know, you want to party? Yeah. Like, yeah. Hey, how'd you know? Yeah, yeah. We, we uh, Go through his porn searches. We know what the girl he, that he likes the girls that look like you know whatever <laughs> you know what's brilliant about this though uh, all joking aside the, the insurance thing uh this is a good thing for insurance companies it'll lower everybody's price of, for insurance cuz what insurance companies have to do is they have to calculate in you know the risk of drivers and that's in the price well one of the problems with calculating risk is until you've gotten a ticket or an accident they assume you're a safe driver what if what if you just haven't gotten a ticket or an accident yet right right but if they're picking up your data of your driving habits it's right. much more accurate which allows and the more accurate insurance companies are with their predictions, the cheaper the prices are. Because whatever they miss with accuracy, they have to make up that buffer with cost. Right. It'll be mm-hmm. way you more. Know what I'm it'll make it way more competitive. They're way more competitive. Yeah. So everybody's. In, but here's the thing with insurance companies: the are they going to really exist for for drivers like they used to? Probably not with self driving cars. Mm-hmm. You know, you're not going to need insurance. The car will need insurance, not you. Whatever self driving cars driving you. Ah, oh, that'd be interesting, actually. Mm-hmm. That yeah. is a, that is that's a, an interesting thought. It's going to take such a long time though before cars are not, and even then you still have like we said, they'll still have race tracks for cars to go do stuff on. So mm-hmm. I don't know how long you would be before we don't use insurance for cars. It's going to be a long time. If it wasn't for the the road laws and stuff, that thing would be adopted so quick. It's just that's the big hurdle, right? Is how are we going to mix up? Human drivers with with automated yeah, drivers. They need their own roads for a while, like mm-hmm. their own. Freeways. I say we throw back, dude. I'm going to ride a horse to work tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> just I'm trying to fight climate change. I'm gonna get one of those. We get one of those bicycles with a huge fucking wheel in the front, you know, and the <laughs> tiny one in the back. Hey guys, dude, I remember when I learned why that wheel was so big when I was a kid, and it blew me away. I never knew why. I always thought to myself, like, that's, like, the that's stupidest, so ridiculous, stupidest design ever. It's, yeah. Why would you put such a big wheel <laughs> and then a little wheel in the back? I'm like, yeah. are they idiots? Yeah. And then I learned, oh, it's because the fucking the, the pedal connects directly to the tire, so the bigger the yeah. wheel. The bigger the wheel, the better the leverage. I was like, ooh. <laughs> when I was a kid, I remember thinking, like, yeah. dumb. Yeah. Why did they do that? It's like it's like why bus drivers have the big steering wheels, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Same <Yeah>. concept. <laughs> exactly. yeah. This quaz brought to you by Organifi. For those days you fall short on getting your organic veggies or whole food nutrition, Organifi fills the gap with laboratory-tested certified organic superfoods to help give your health and performance the added edge. Try Organifi totally risk-free for 60 days by going to Organifi.com. That's O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I.com. And use the coupon code MINDPUMP for 20% off at checkout. All right, our first question is from Sarah Reina 3 what is the best way to gain muscle while staying somewhat lean? Mm, good question. That's a tough one because gaining muscle requires a calorie surplus. And sometimes it can be quite frustrating trying to gain muscle and strength. And sometimes one of the answers is just, just eat more food. And you will see strength go up. You will see the scale go up. 
But does that necessarily mean you're adding um, lean body mass? Mm-hmm. I remember uh, years ago reading an article on just how much or how many grams of protein are present in one pound of muscle and how many grams of protein more per day you would need to gain one pound of muscle per week, which, by the way, is a lot of muscle. If you gained one pound of muscle a week, that's like steroid level, like four pounds a month. I mean, that's insane. Oh, you're uh, going to be a beast. Yeah, that's insane amounts of muscle growth. So even at that pace... What, reading the article, they said something like 10 more grams of protein a day <coughs> essentially is what you needed. And that's when I realized, like, oh, you don't have to totally stuff and feed yourself uh, to gain muscle, uh, to gain lean body mass. You're just gaining weight uh, when you do that. Yeah, um, and I mean, in terms of, of actually trying to maintain like a lean physique while you're trying to build too, like, I mean, just think about elongating your goal and like, like, like it's a slower process. It's a slower process than you trying to just bulk up and like really gain the size within a few months and and wait. Like uh, I think a better strategy is to stretch that out, you know, you know, a bit longer and do these intermittent like uh, small mini cuts and mini bulks. This is uh, why I like to even during a bulk incorporate like intermittent fasting. Mm-hmm. Um, I Bring think a calorie deficit. Yeah, because like to your point, Sal. Like if you if you aggressively want to build muscle, then it's obviously advantageous to be in a caloric surplus most of the time, right? Like if that's if that's your main goal, like I, I care about building as much muscle as I possibly can, but I also don't want to get really fat along the way. So what are some good strategies? Well one of the one of those strategies would be to on a weekly basis to intermittently have a a day of fasting. And mm-hmm. I think that what that does, I think that really helps uh people that are consuming in a surplus every day to not to overdo it because that's what I see is the extremes and I, I think of like my competitor peers that I would see this in the bulking season and I would like just kind of shake my head when I'd see these guys <clears throat> eating thousands of calories more every single day and the attitude is kind of like fuck it I'm trying to build so let's just let's, let's you know more 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 and what ends up happening is they put on as much body fat or more then they actually put on lean body mass. And then when they decide to cut, it, you know, and just, when you bulk aggressively, it's inevitable you're going to get a little bit of body fat. When you cut aggressively, it's inevitable you're going to lose some muscle. So if you do both extremes, you're really shooting yourself in the foot. You go mm-hmm. hard on the bulk yep. and then you go hard on the cut. It's like you end up in the same spot. And I'd see this a lot. Even at the professional level, I'd see a lot of these competitors get back every show and they look Pretty much the same that they looked the last six shows they did in a row. Yeah, because, but in the off season, I gained you know all this size and I weighed this much. Yeah, and they and it's it's just an yeah. illusion. But when they got on stage and it was time to present that physique again, very very uh, little difference, if a, a, at all. And some guys would regress because we we've, we've talked about this before. Every time you put on uh, body fat like that. Uh, you add fat cells. Mm-hmm. And so when they go back to lean back, they would never look as good as they did on the, the time of force. I, I learned this this lesson. It took me, I don't know, four or five years to learn this lesson. What I would do is in the wintertime, um, I would bulk and I would push it. And I'd get my, so like right now I'm sitting at, and I'm not I'm not super lean right now. I'm, I'm, I'm lean-ish, but I'm not super lean right now. And I weigh about 200 pounds. For me to be relatively lean, I need to be about 190. About 190 and I look pretty good. Under 190, I start to get pretty lean. And so what I used to do is I would bulk up in the winter up to 220, sometimes up to 230. So remember, right now I weigh 200 pounds. So an an additional (laughs) 20 to 30 pounds is how hard I would push it. Then come summertime, I would cut and I would always end up around 187 to 192. And I did this for four or five years in a row, bulk up to 220, 230, could never really push it harder than that, cut down to 190, 187. And finally, at one point, I was like, I'm kind of in the same spot. Like, this is the same. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere. I'm just yeah. gaining body fat and losing body fat, and everything stays the same. So then my approach started to change where I maintained a, a leaner body weight and slowly tried to build, and my health improved as a result of it. It was a, it was a more fun process. Um, I didn't have these extremes, and I think I got uh, you know better uh, better results. Now, to your point, Adam, about the intermittent fasting or or throwing in some low calorie days, that also resensitizes your body to protein. They actually find that consistent high amounts of protein day in and day out, your body, your protein synthesis in relationship to the amount of protein you're eating, starts to drop a little bit. Your body actually becomes desensitized to it, which makes perfect sense. Your body just happens to anything 
that you throw at your body a lot all the time. And so throwing in those low calorie days or lower protein days and then coming back and going back to your your surplus, uh, theoretically, you'll use more of that protein uh, for muscle. Um, now, here's something that we're not covering. The most important thing that you could possibly do to gain lean body mass is to send the right muscle building signal. If the right muscle building signal is present, uh, it's easy to gain lean body mass. Uh, I can't tell you how many times I've had clients who were experienced lifters. So these are people who weren't beginners mm -hmm. who would come to me and I'd see their diet and their training and I didn't change anything but their workout. And then what, what ended up happening? Yeah. They gain you know, three, four pounds of lean body mass. This is especially true if you if you have found yourself in a, a modality that you've fallen in love with, like a, a group class that you've been doing forever, uh, a, a, a sets and reps of you've been following the same for a long time. You gravitate towards similar exercises all the time. If you're somebody who t tends to do that uh, and you've been doing that for more than six weeks, then that's one of the easiest ways to start to put lean body mass on is to put put yourself in a very little caloric surplus, 250, 500 cals a day, and just change the stimulus, change the adaptation, change your programming. And that right there, it, and, and coupled with uh, the occasional intermittent fasting day, I tell you what, yeah. you 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 won't put very much body fat on, and it's, it's slower and more gradual. You're not going to see your scale, and, and that's the problem is a lot of people – uh, when trying to build muscle, they they look at the scale as their telltale, and this was mm -hmm. something I did for a long time. And I, this is how this is what fucked me up all the time is I used only the scale, like oh my god, to so Sal, right. Sal's yeah. a point of trying to get to two thirty. Like I was so pumped to see the scale go higher, 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 bulk, higher, bulk, bulk. Yeah, and I was I was putting on mostly body fat. And you know what's funny about that is like you would weigh yourself at the end of the day when you were heaviest. You would weigh yourself before you took a shit. Like this was all mind games you play with yourself. Three Total. shirts on. Yeah. yeah, it was all mind. Look, I tell you what, there is a small segment of the population that uh, benefits from really pushing calories. And this is the, and, and, and this is just, again, my experience. This is the, the hard gainer kind of young male uh, category. Like I've worked with young men, teens in particular, who seem to react to more calories by building more muscle. And the more food you throw at them, mm -hmm. the more muscle that they build. Uh, I think my son is kind of like that. Like, I'm going to see this summer, I'm going to have him eat more and more. And I think he's probably just going to gain muscle and barely any body There's fat. There's that, like, Goldilocks zone. Yes. You know, it's like that. That, uh, And, again, like, lifters who's never done it before, too, will experience this as well, where there's that period where it just seems like everything's <clears throat> working. And, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, like, going through that process of, like, you know, you got all this testosterone, you got all this, like, development that's happening, and, uh, you know, adding calories to that mix really does fuel muscle growth. Well, yeah, it's, yeah. it's a really good point you bring up, too, because it does depend on who I'm talking to, how I advise this, because talking to somebody that's 35, 40 years old, uh, I, I think I would stick with what I said originally. Yeah, but, you get some 16-year-old hard gainer? Yeah, you ask a 17 year old kid who wakeboards like me and snowboarded like I did and played basketball. And this, I mean, I was burning so many calories, you couldn't feed me enough. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. it was, it, it didn't, I'd have to sit down and eat all day long to try. So there, there is that exception. So the, the, that exception, the rule for the younger generation that's listening to this show right now that, you know, you may not be able to consume a 500 oh, calorie it's a job. surplus every day. We were talking about this earlier, like how, you know, just like adding in those calories, like it's not intuitive, uh, you know, like as you're try like, I'm full. Like, yeah, I know, but you still got to eat more, mm. you know, and like that's that's a new concept. It, it's funny because it, it reminds me of like the first time I drink beer. You know, I was just like drinking it and it was just like, okay, yeah, I'm not really thirsty, but I'll just drink another one. And like, no, that's the point. You got to keep drinking them for, to feel it. You know, I'm just like, what? <laughs> I'm not weird. thirsty. Yeah, but I don't want any more. I'm like, I'm, I'm not thirsty. <laughs> yeah, no. yeah. I know. It's funny I, with my with my son the other day, because again, remember he's lifting and he's now kind of, you know, interested in putting on some size. And so I said, okay. I said, let me help you with, with breakfast because uh, right now he makes himself breakfast. So I said, let me help you with it. So for breakfast, he had... Scrambled eggs, uh, bacon, uh, a glass of milk, and then I gave him a little bit of oatmeal. And these are small servings, by the way, so I don't want you to imagine this huge. And I'm working them slowly. So my son's eating it, and he's like, I can't eat anymore. And I'm like, listen, you got to eat your carbs, too. Don't forget your oatmeal. So he's like, oh, are you sure? I'm like, listen, your metabolism's so fast right now, and you're trying to gain muscle. If that's what you want to do, then you got to eat more food. If you don't want to, no big deal, and I won't make it for you. I don't want to force you or whatever. So he like eats it, right? Makes himself do it. 
I pick him up for school after uh, you know later on in the day. I'm like, how was school today? He's like, dude, I almost puked in, in PE. I'm like, what do you mean? He goes, PE is my first period. He goes, after, after I ate all that food, <laughs> they, all they, they had us the running game. the bleachers. He's like, I almost oh, puked. Oh, man. I'm like, welcome. I remember to- those days. Yeah, I remember those days. <laughs> no, I mean, look, at the end of the day, uh, step number one is have a, the, the right stimulus to gain muscle and the right environment. Good sleep is crucial. Uh, good, great workout, a workout that's getting you stronger, that's not overtraining you, not undertraining you, that's crucial. And then as far as diet is concerned, you don't need, for most people, again, you don't need that many more calories. You do need more calories, but not that many more to be to build lean body mass. And I would say this, look, if you're a relative beginner and you're gaining more than like two to three pounds of, of, of weight on the scale per month, you're probably not gaining lean body mass. For most people, two pounds of, of solid weight on the scale per month, that's a decent pace. Uh, you know, Unless you're on anabolic steroids or you're like some genetic uh, freak, gaining more than that on the scale probably means you're holding more water and then you know maybe gaining body fat. And Again, it uh, depends on the person, but generally speaking, I think that's true. Next question is from Michi Tech. What is the best way to warm up for weight training when you are pressed for time? Mm, specific to you. Yeah. 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 I would go uh, priming. Uh, mm-hmm. you prime your body. Priming your body properly takes anywhere, realistically, anywhere between 5 to 15 minutes, mm-hmm. depending on the movement you're going to do, depending on uh, you know what your issues are for your own body. If I'm going to deadlift, for example – my priming lasts me four minutes. Uh, pri- deadlifting for me is very natural. I typically can almost get right into it. So I do a couple rotational movements, like windmill type movements to, to get my QL, excuse me, yeah, yeah, my QL primed. I do a couple um, good mornings uh, with no weight on a bar to prime my glutes and my hamstrings. Um, and then I jump right into my first light set of deadlifts and then I'm ready to go. It takes me about five minutes. Before I squat, now my priming is going to take me about 15 minutes because the squat for me is far more difficult. I'm doing my combat stretch. I'm doing my hip priming type movements. I'm doing, you know, just a, it takes a lot more time to get me to be able to do a, a proper squat. Yeah. So it really depends on, on what you're doing in the person. Definitely, like, individualize it. Like, uh, find out those very specific stretches that will put you in the best position possible. And I think it's, uh, you know, it's about assessing your posture and, like, uh, what specific lifts, like Sal's mentioning, those specific lifts that you have in store for you, the especially the, the big, gross, you know, motor movement lifts. Um, but also there's something to be said about like really taking a few sets, uh, before that light, you know, and going through the mechanics of those lifts on their own and like doing a build up set, uh, to, to, to warm and prime, uh, that very specific movement as well. I do that with squats a lot. Well, problem with that saying that, and what I don't like about that is that that that's kind of the traditional way I feel like people warm up right now. Like when I go in the gym and I see the average lifter, they consider warming up, getting right into a squat and just doing it lightweight mm-hmm. or getting into the bench press. And th- I mean, this is what I did forever. As a, as a, Even as a young trainer, this was a lot what I did. Um, it wasn't until I got older did I, one, I didn't start to have a lot of issues as far as, as, far as shoulder stuff, hip stuff, ankle shit. Um, I didn't have a lot of problems and deviation. I got that as I gotten older. Um and then I started to realize the importance of priming. I mean, I was having this discussion last night with my good my good buddy Ev, who strained his hip flexor, and I tried to tell him, like, bro, we're you know we're thirty eight, dude. You can't just go take a kickboxing class that you haven't done in months and just think you're going to fucking jump into class and start throwing kicks on a bag. Like, mm. that's exactly what's wrong. You have to prime and warm your body up before you do that. And so I was actually giving him some. Uh, hip hinge movements to to warm warm his hips up before he goes and throws something explosive that's so important. I said we're just at a point in our life like that, so I don't like giving the advice of like a, a, a warm up set because what what happens is if you have um, dysfunction or you you have postural deviations, which we all have, it's just a matter of how bad it is, and you just go into a a warm up squat. Your body will go to that default pattern. It will always do what is easiest for it and doesn't necessarily mean what's best for it. <clears throat> Priming actually takes effort. Like you have to like understand where the breakdown in the kinetic chain is for you and then how how do you address that with like some intensity? Like you have to like when I do my zone one test, 
uh, before I squat, which is my, like addressing my upper cross syndrome. I mean, it's work. I have to get against the wall and I'm like, you know, I'm fight, I'm pushing against it. But boy, after I do five little rounds of that, I mean, it's a night and day difference when I get under that bar, how much I can sit with my chest up and my shoulders back and my head in, in, in a neutral position. So, I mean, this is really why we created Maps Prime and Prime Pro. Uh, and in my opinion, the most valuable programs that we have. I, I still to this day think that everybody should own these, especially if you're above the age 30. And that's not to say that somebody who's in their 20s shouldn't be priming too. Absolutely, you should be. But I know damn well how everybody moves. And when you when you get older, it just gets worse right. and worse and worse. And so it becomes more and more important that you've got to do these priming movements. And if you don't have a lot of time, you want to know which ones are most important to your body. So I've got a ton of dysfunction, but I know that if I'm going to go do an exercise that it, it requires me to be in a good shoulder position, like I got to do my zone one work because that's going to affect it's it. It's part of the workout. Right. Yeah. yeah and it, 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 I want to throw a caveat to that since you, you know, uprooted that, uh, in terms of like squatting down, uh, you know, and after after doing all the due diligence of like figuring out like your very specific joint function and like working through the priming movements for that, in terms of like, you know, going through the mechanics of a squat and then adding intensity and tension uh, on your way through that to really like like hone in on that process. That's what I'm getting at. Not willy nilly like dropping into the squat. No, it's, I think it's a, good, it's a good point because it's what you said is what I do now because I've done all the work to prime. Exactly. I've done that, such that a- was the aftermath of like that. So I know like but it's a good point to bring up because people do just jump in to an exercise and just like go through the reps without like really concentrating on connecting to that process. No, it depends on the person. It depends on the exercise. And then it definitely depends on how hard you're going to go. Look, here's the deal. If you're going to get in your car and drive down the street, you're not going to make a big deal about the preparation, checking the tires, the oil, the gas, is everything balanced? If you're going to get in your car and drive across country, you're going to prime. You're going to pay a lot of attention to priming. If you don't have much time and you're thinking, I want to do some squats, but I don't have much time to do a bunch of priming, guess what you're going to do? Go light. You're going to go light and you're going to go easy and you're going to practice your squats if that's what you want to do. Now, ideally, you're going to spend time priming so you could have your full workout and also consider priming a part of your workout. So it really does depend. If I don't have much time to prime, but I do want to do some exercises, I might not do certain exercises. Like I may not squat knowing that I don't have time to prime, or I may treat that exercise as a low intensity version of itself because I know I haven't primed properly. Like I'm definitely not going to go 80% intensity, 90% intensity on a barbell squat if I don't have the time to do a 15 minute priming session beforehand. (laughs) But I may do a 30% squat, go real light, and just kind of go through full range of motion and just be like, cool, I just went real easy. Now I'm going to move on to the exercise I can do more comfortably. So that's all the things you need to consider. But I think the, the most important point is that you should consider priming a big part of your workout. It's extremely important. It makes it makes what you're doing effective. Way more effective. You know, like you don't want to... You don't want to uh, to squat in a way that only strengthens your problems because that's mm-hmm. what'll happen. Mm-hmm. Whatever you're doing is what's going to get stronger. So if I'm moving in a way that's suboptimal, that's the way I'm going to get better at moving suboptimally, and I'm going to continue getting better at moving suboptimally. And over time, I'm going to increase the risk of problems and injuries. And at the very, very least, I'm never going to reach my full potential. I'm never going to be able to squat. <laughs> the amount of weight that I can squat. I'm never going to be able to get the benefits of that exercise because I'm always doing it suboptimally. Well, and to that point, even going further, like if you're actually going through the, you know, the set, the full set with load, it's, in my opinion, it's better to go lighter than you probably would if you start to break in your in mechanically. Totally, totally. So, you know, you got to consider that too. Just to press your way through, it doesn't necessarily do you any good. No, no. Again, you're strengthening. It's like it's like learning how to type with two fingers and then just trying to type faster with two fingers and never learning the better way to do it. Like, you're going to get really good at typing with two fingers, but you'll never be as good as you could be if you learn how to do it the right way. Next question is from the Rock and Rose. What are some specific exercises other than mobility movements that will help with your squat? Mm. Okay. So exercises 
that can help with a squat other than mobility. So I'm assuming she's talking about, or because I think I know who this person is. Oh, it's Jessica. Yeah, it's Jessica. I, th- I think it's important right away, though, to, you know, uh, rephrase or reiterate what you've said, I think, a bunch of times on this show, which is that treating, we should treat the squat, the deadlift, these, these complex movements like a skill. Mm-hmm. And just like you talk about a, a sport, and nothing is going to get you better at that sport than practicing the skill itself. Mm hmm. Right, so even though there are other exercises that complement it, and that there's carryover from it that will help improve your squat, nothing is going to make you better at squatting than squatting more often and and, and getting course. getting good at that. So I think that's important. Great point. Great to, point. to make that point first. Personally, uh, an mm-hmm. exercise that I think has complemented my squat the best is a Bulgarian split squat. Totally. Mm-hmm. That was uh, I, I instantly. Uh, and I remember we had we did a great YouTube video with Jordan Shallow a couple of years ago, and um, in fact, it was like how he. In fact, that's a really good video for someone who's trying to improve their squat. I think he took me through like three different uh, priming movements and exercises to do before you get into like a heavy loaded squat, and one of those was the Bulgarian. I think we even did like a uh, um, off loaded. Or what you would call that, Justin, where you're loaded on the opposite side for a Bulgarian split squat. So you unilaterally loaded. Yeah, yeah. unilaterally loaded uh, Bulgarian split squat. You can watch the video on YouTube with Jordan Shallow. Um, that he taught me that warm up, and that became kind of a staple way that I would kind of prime my body before I went into like a really heavy squat, and it made a yeah. big difference. Yeah, no, I, I'm going to echo that. I'd say. <clears throat> The all split stance exercises, so walking lunges, back step lunges, front step lunges, Bulgarian split stance squats, those exercises are phenomenal for helping people get just a, a better squat. The way that it puts torsion on the, the pelvis, the way that you use your legs to stabilize, the front leg is still doing a squat, by the way, so if you're doing a Bulgarian split stance squat or a walking lunge, if you just didn't look at the back leg, that front leg is doing a, a squat. It's doing a very similar movement to a regular barbell squat. The split stance movements are the best for this. In fact, when I <laughs> train clients who uh, didn't couldn't squat because it wasn't good enough yet, they weren't they didn't have the mobility to squat yet. I that's where I would start. I would start with a supported uh, stationary lunge in varying degrees of of that type of an exercise. And that's where we would go. And we would start there and we get stronger there and get stronger there. And then I throw in mobility movements. <clears throat> and before you know it, I would, you know, move them to a box squat. That's another good one. And then before you know it, they'd be messing around with a, a full squat. And this process would take me anywhere between one to one month to a year or longer. Some clients never, uh, I had clients that just had such bad mobility issues that we were never able to squat, but boy, did we get uh, close to being able to do so. And the split stance movements are just, they're easier to get down, more natural, um, and they really highlight imbalances between right to left uh, sides. Now, here's this this is great for people who are great squatters too. Let's say you're an excellent squatter, but you want your squat weight to go up. And you're like, oh, I'm stuck at 300 pounds or 200 pounds or whatever, and I want to be able to squat more. Throw those split stance exercises in there yeah. and watch what happens to your, your, your barbell squat. It mm-hmm. goes up. Yeah, I think too, like to consider the upper body uh, and a lot of times like that, and I know she doesn't want like mobility exercises, but I think shoulder mobility is very uh, underlooked uh, when it comes to barbell squats. And I think that a lot of people notice, uh, you know, wrist, elbow, shoulder pain uh, from, you know, loading and, and having their arms in that fixed isometric position uh, a lot. So to do... Uh, exercises like I, I guess like an example would be kind of like a Z press or something a little bit behind your head, but you're stabilizing that or even doing like a, a you know, a, a, an overhead carry to be able to stabilize, you know, your shoulder and pack it properly, uh, you know, may help to contribute to a better squat and mechanically. I'll, I'll give you two other ones too. I think the a barbell hip thrust. Um, is a great movement. I think uh, in the squat, one of the more difficult things for people to connect to is the the hinge process of the squat. Uh, and a lot of people want to drive off of their, their quads. Uh, so that's a great movement to really prime the glutes. I know you don't want to prime or, and, and mobility stuff we're not talking about, but I mean, you, even just as a, as a movement and an exercise and like lifting heavy, it'll, that'll really help that pattern 
And so that'll help improve the squat. I actually, because of you guys the other day, so we were talking about um, the hex bar. Mm. And um, and one of the things that I talked about that I, I used to really like the hex bar for teaching kind of that that the explosive hip movement. And man, I and I did it with those intentions. I wasn't jumping mm-hmm. with it, you know. I, and I I think I just put, I don't know, I put like 150 pounds on on there. Not a lot of weight, but I was really, uh, you know, I'd get myself all locked and loaded. I get down in that in that squat position, and I was really trying to be explosive with my hips coming forward. And man, I I my my butt was lit up from doing that. And so I used to use that with clients to oh, yeah. to kind of teach them to use their glutes more in the squat, which your glutes are the biggest, strongest muscle in your in your legs or in your lower half, and and your should be the prime mover in a squat. But for most people, it sometimes is not. Mm. And so I think there's a lot of value to those two movements uh, in your routine. Also, yeah, and sometimes uh, you'll find that if you have trouble with a back squat. <coughs> That practicing a front squat with very light weight, like just the bar or even a broomstick, just to balance and keep yourself upright, sometimes that'll help you with your back squat. Uh, I found that oftentimes with clients where their back squat just looked really bad. They had too much forward lean in their squat. So I'd have them put a light barbell across their shoulders you know, with that front squat position. It would help them stay upright and it would increase or improve the mobility uh, in their hips and ankles because it gives them more of an upright type of a squat. Next question is from A Fine Five. Can overtraining or working out too much cause stomach issues such as bloating, stomach pain, and acid reflux? If so, how should you go about it? Absolutely. Well, well let's let's rephrase the question. Can too much stress on the body there you go. cause digestive issues? Yes. Absolutely. Um, any kind of too much stress can cause issues, whether it's emotional stress. I mean, you ever you ever get scared to death uh, or get really depressed or sad? Uh, I, I had a conversation with a client this morning about this topic. So this is kind of crazy. You guys picked this question, and I was actually really frustrated. She's kind of a she's a friend of mine. She's a blogger right now, and it's I'm out, I'm offered I've offered to help her just for free when she can and send me a message, keep me updated on her diet, what she's doing. And she sent me this message about feeling all bloated and fluffy. And and, and I know that she's in a, a caloric deficit right now and she shouldn't feel this way. But I also watch her on her Instagram and I catch her at, even after I've told her to stop fucking running. Uh, running still. I know she loves to run. And uh, I also know she's got a, a high stress job and, uh, and, and gravitates towards this... Um, you know, type of training where she, she used, I'd met her at Orange Theory back in the days. And so I kind of know that's already one of her things. And she's trying to get to the bottom of this. And I, and I was explaining to her, I'm like, listen, you got to understand that the body doesn't really understand the different stresses. It just, it just receives the message that it's being stressed. And so exercise, anxiety, stressful work day, lack of sleep, that's all fucking compounding. Mm -hmm. And the problem is, you go and you go push these workouts and you go push your exercise and you go push your running because you get this spike in cortisol and it gives you this temporary relief and makes you think that it makes you feel better. But what you don't realize is you're just pouring gasoline on the fire on this already overstressed body from all these things. And after I sent this long old message, she goes, oh my God, she goes, I haven't been sleeping very well at night and I've had all kinds of anxiety too. And I just went and saw the doctor and he wanted to put me on medication for anxiety. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, fuck, no, no, you don't need all that. Back off the fucking running, back off the intensity, go focus on your sleep. And I gave her all these recommendations, but trying to get her to understand that just because your diet is in check and you're eating lower calories and you think you should be leaning out and not feeling fluffy. And the reason why it doesn't make sense to you is because all these other things are factors in exactly what this person's asking. This sneaks up on the best of us too. And I mean, it's one of those things, if you literally had a list that you could create for yourself of all these factors that would contribute to that, and then you started writing it in, like it's happened to me a few times where I was just thought I was training and I was training pretty light, but uh, the amount of stress and the, the lack of sleep and, uh, you know, my diet being a little bit off to where my gut was off, I would sit at the dinner table and, and the kids were just being kids and they're just talking really loud and being, you know, like excited. And I would just sit there and Ugh! like I have I have heartburn issues, like if my gut's a little bit off and it would just 
oh, it would just be like a fire coming up through my throat. And, and they'd look at me like, what's wrong with you? And then it became this thing. And uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, it definitely will affect like the stress levels will amount to, you know, you physically feeling that like through, you know, your gut or wherever else it's going to end up. No, when you, in fact, and I, I don't remember where I read this, but the, there was an actual study that showed that hard training athletes are at a higher risk, a significantly higher risk of having gut issues than uh, than regular population. And, and the reason why this blew people away is because they're like, well, these are healthy people. Why would they have gut issues? These are people who exercise a lot. And it's because they push themselves so hard um, that it, you know these, these issues become more prevalent. Because one thing you'll find about hardcore fitness people is they have a tendency to overdo it. They, 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 they tend to not train appropriately. They tend to push it all the time. It's a constant dance. Yep. between too much and the right amount. In fact... And these same people stack all the caffeine on them, too, and oh, like the every workout too. Everything. Yeah, Supplements and, and everything. And eating a lot of food post-workout, which you're already in an inflamed state. Now you're throwing a bunch of food in your gut when you have the systemic inflammation. It's just a recipe for disaster. Super hard workouts, high stress, causes change changes in the, in the gut microbiome. So, no, it definitely can have a, a big effect. And it, it's funny, you know, uh, I experienced this myself. Like, I'll be training the right amount, um, which usually means I'm doing well in the gym. I feel strong. I've got good pumps. I've got good energy. And so where does my mind go? Like, oh, that's feeling good. I can go harder. Oh, let's go so, hard. Yeah, yeah, let's yeah. just fucking keep going until the shit every time. backfires almost every single time. So so here, here's how you should go about it. Uh, manage and look at your total stress yeah. and manage it appropriately. Here's why I would start. I would start with two places, your sleep and your workouts. Prioritize your sleep. Uh, make it a big deal. Two hours before, turn off your lights or wear blue blockers. Don't use electronics. Uh, make sure you do things that are calming. Speak softly. All this stuff makes a difference. No, I, not making this up. Yeah. Uh, have a cool room. Black out the room so there's no light at all, including uh, you know lights from outside the the you know the street lights or whatever, um, and prioritize your sleep. And then number two, when you go to the gym to work out, stop thinking to yourself I'm going to go work out and start thinking to yourself I'm going to go in there and practice some exercises and just kind of feel how things feel and, and feel them out. And then the last thing is I would look at your nutrition, but I'm assuming you've already done that. The reason why I'm assuming that is because your question is can overtraining cause stomach issues, which tells me that you've probably already looked at your food. You've probably looked at your food and you just can't figure out what the hell is going on with your food. But if you haven't looked at your food, definitely look there as well. Eliminate all common food intolerances. Uh, don't sleep. Um, uh, make sure you sleep within a feeding window so you're not eating too close uh, to bedtime. Uh, chew your food properly. You know All the things that you need to do. A great book on fixing gut issues is Healthy Gut, Healthy You um, by Dr. Ruscio, who's our good friend. It's an excellent, excellent book. Um, but yeah, no, all too much stress on the body causes this inflamed state and can cause a whole host of issues. And it's funny, Adam, that you, you talked about your client going to the doctor and the doctor's response is so typical of Western medicine, right. which is, oh, you're presenting me with the symptom. I have a drug that can control the symptom. It's like, okay, why don't we look at why her anxiety and her sleep is is becoming an issue rather than saying, take these drugs that mask the symptom. Because then what ends up happening is you, you keep doing what caused those symptoms in the first place, but now you don't you don't feel the symptoms. And then eventually the symptoms will get so loud that your medications don't even work. Um, and then it becomes bigger problems like chronic health issues. So with that, go to mindpumpfree.com. Check out our guides. They're all absolutely free. We have fat loss guides, muscle building guides. We have a guide for personal trainers. So if you're a trainer, and you want to improve the chances and odds that you'd be a successful trainer, this guide is priceless. Uh, in fact, it is priceless. In fact, it's free. Huh. Um, so it's mindpumpfree.com. You can also find all of us on Instagram. We have our own individual pages. You can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin. You can find me at Mind Pump Sal and Adam at Mind Pump Adam. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. 
With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.